right guys here welcome back it is now friday the 17th of june uh just sitting in the pony tunnel here guys uh, it's quite windy today just popped up the garden to do a bit of weeding uh, it's a lot of weeding to be done uh, so i'm just slowly starting to go through each section and get it all sorted out uh, all the weeding inside of this pony tunnel is being done and uh, there's quite a lot of it so i'm just going to throw it and get it all cleaned up here uh, because you want rid of the weeds, you want the weeds to hang around the plant because they're taking all the goodness and stuff away from the plant uh, and also you want that nice airflow to go all the way through as well so you've just got to try and keep it on top of it it's every other day to be totally honest with you if you see it just pull it out uh, and it just helps you a little bit just to, to manage it to, to try and keep it on top of it a few issues going on around uh, this plot there in this garden uh, we've been getting attacked by loads of different uh, bugs and stuff so I think it's a bit of a mixed bag out there things are looking okay things are not looking so okay uh, but it's, it's the first year here so we we'll just need to see how the ground works see what's going on and uh, go from there a uh, couple of couple of things we'll put some cabbages and stuff like that out uh, a second batch and some cauliflowers and, and stuff uh, some of them have been eaten by some mice by the looks of it uh, also I noticed some of the onions uh, I think they're the, the stir on or the turbo I'm not too sure now uh, I have to look back uh, but the onions onion sets uh, a couple of them were just flopped over and looked a bit deformed a little bit uh, so I pulled them out and uh, I had some sort of uh, brown little carcasses in them, like look like little cocoons. So I'm assuming that uh, the allium uh, fly. Uh, so don't know what's going on there. It's just a couple of them, which I pulled up. So I'm assuming it's that anyway. So I'm keeping a good eye on it. Uh, but I did spray all the ground with some nemesis. Uh, so hopefully that should protect them a little bit the the do seem like they're all picking up a little bit uh, which i'm pleased with we did get hit with a lot of uh, aphids uh, the grey aphids as well uh, some of the leaves are deformed and stuff like that uh, but we have got rid of them because uh, i kept on spraying them with salty water and stuff and also the spray what i get them when i sprayed the rest of the whole garden uh, i think that's worked on them as well uh, but some of the leaves are deformed some of the leaves are the better leaves what come through are looking more greener and better so hopefully they're all right a couple of issues going on with the kale and also the well i say the broccoli uh, some of the kale wasn't growing very well uh, some of them looked little and struggling so felt one one felt loose pulled it up and uh, we had a couple of maggots on the root ball uh, so I'm assuming that's your the uh, brassica flies what go to the cabbages and stuff like that I'm assuming that's what what it is where it's just laid its eggs it's buried itself down it's laid its eggs around the the ball root ball of the plant and then the maggot starts eating it away and the plant just gets weak and before you know it just drops over so there was a couple of plants there what had that on a couple of the kale the the broccoli, the uh, Calabrese broccoli, uh, I think it looks a little bit pale. It doesn't look as green. I don't know if that's because it's been damaged uh, by the aphid, the grey aphid, but the foliage on it, the leaves, they just look a little bit pale. Uh, when I was looking at the other stuff, the kale, what well, got attacked by the roof fly, uh, was quite pale as well so i just don't know i don't know if, if some going on with that little bit of section so i have been just giving it a little bit of a tug and just seeing if uh, it's still strong in the ground because obviously when they eat the roots it just starts slackening off so but I, you can t tell by the leaves watch the leaves because the leaves start to to fold and droop and you can see it's starving of, of feed and stuff you know nutrients and that so a little bit of concern about that but 
we'll see we'll see like i say guys uh we've just got to see how this garden runs this year really really struggled with uh cucumbers uh, really struggled with cucumbers very slow uh grow lost a couple of them as well uh got two in here inside yeah these are the last two uh but really struggled with them uh i got some butternut squash outside struggled with them as well uh I think it's the wind and stuff like that. I just don't know. I just think it's the dead slow, dead slow uh, growing. But uh, I had a few butternut squash outside and they were lost a couple. So we're still going to have three or four out there. Uh, but all I'm doing, guys, is, is just letting them plants grow till they get established. And then I'll just nip away the weakest one because I know they're going to spread, you know, and I'd be happy if I keep two. Uh, but the reason why I've done that for so I've got enough out there so I can see which is going to survive because, like I say, I've just struggled with them and uh, I lost a couple. Sweet corn, sweet corn's looking okay, uh, not too bad. Starting to get side shoots on now, uh, so I like to cut them off. So I will take it outside and let you have a look so you know what I'm on about. Uh, but I, the sweet corn grows nice and tall and at the bottom of the plant you're starting to get these suckers that the side shoots will come off. Been growing sweet corn for three years now, so the first year when I grew it, I didn't know nothing about it, so I just left it. And once the plant got matured and started getting the cobs on, it, this would produce little cobs and they were just deformed and stuff like that. So after that, I just start just nipping them away and uh, just the bottoms all because they come from the bottom. Uh, you just want the one stem at the very bottom of the lower leaves not the side shoots coming out so i nip them away because they take a lot of energy from the plant as well uh, so yeah i'll show you outside a uh, perfect example of some of them outside we bell peppers seem to be doing okay uh, really, really pleased with the bell peppers up, up at the moment uh, the sweet bell peppers i'll let you have a little look at them and also i'll let you have a little look at the peppers what i got directly in the ground in this bit of bed inside it yeah they uh, been going through the tomato plants, getting them cleaned up, uh, just keeping on top of the foliage, uh, making sure that they're, they're not sweating and out like that, uh, making sure we've got plenty of airflow going around. And also what I've been doing is, as the plant's been growing, uh, I've been trimming away the lower leaves. And also, another little trick and all, because the leaves, leaves go quite long, cut the leaf in half, uh, so it's not as long. And, and then all the energy is not going straight to that one big massive leaf uh, so I'll let you have a look, look at that as well and we'll go through it but uh, hi guys so a couple of issues a couple of problems but on the upside some stuff are looking good as well so I'll spin the camera around we'll start off in here and let you have a little look and then we'll go outside I'll give you a quick look outside to see what's been going on and then what I'm going to be doing is, is I'm going to be tackling these jobs uh, hopefully over the weekend and we'll get them sorted. Also, I've got my pudding tunnel door on because we've been getting hit with so much wind. The wind's just been coming straight in the pudding tunnel and it's just been shaking stuff about. So I got a door, I made a door, I'm really pleased with. This back end's open, which is absolutely fine because I've got the fence there, so nothing's kind of, you know, it's the, the main bit where it was coming in. So when it's nice and hot, I leave the door open, but also the door has got, it's half netting and half plastic. So I'm pleased with it. So I spin the camera now, right, guys? Right guys, uh, I hope you can hear us all right because it is quite windy, uh, but these are my sweet bell peppers and as you can see there, have got some nice uh, peppers coming on there. This one here is a sweet bell pepper but it's a chocolate one and as you can see it's full of peppers uh, but they're all struggling to grow to get bigger so I need to get through that plan, I need to clean it up a little bit and sort it out because uh, as you see on here, We've got four peppers on and they're developing nicely. Uh, same again guys. A couple of peppers on there. So that's a chocolate one. The rest of them are a rainbow mix. So as you can see there, just been doing some weeding. I hope the camera view is okay because it's not the best of. Uh, these are we leaks. So these are we pot leaks. So these are we pot leaks. These are going to be going out very soon. Probably in another three more weeks or so. 
from Delia's here, which I really need to get out. These are a money maker. Uh, these are what I've been given of an R plot holder. And what I decided to do is I decided to just get a cheap bag of compost, cost £1.50, uh, a pot, cut the bottom off, stick the string in underneath the pot, so it goes underneath the pot, stick the plant in, and then obviously water it in, and then I'm slowly just wrapping the plant around the string till we get to the top. So we'll see how they get on. And all I do is I just feed around the top and water in there. Cucumber just got over there directly in the ground. Like I say, guys have been struggling with them, so hopefully I'm gonna get that up and that can go along there somewhere. There we go. Right, these are my kasams. As you can see there, they're starting to get some nice buds on now. So I think these are all a uh, Allison piece. A uh, nice lovely yellow one. Uh, I can't remember now, but we've got a few there. And like I say, they are producing nice heads. So some of them I just kept on a single stem. I've just been taking all the side roots from and some I did trim took took the top off so uh, encourage more side shoots so would encourage more uh, side shoots uh, just so I can do a little bit of an experiment so for example this one's got one two three four on and uh, I think this one's got three on and then the rest are just singles uh, just to see how big the flower heads grow so I know how many I can get on each plant so these are more uh, sweet bell peppers and these ones here are just in the pot uh, a normal pot and I just stuck the pot in the ground so all the bottoms on and all that sort of stuff uh, just stuck the pot in the ground just like that these ones here so these here were just I had a couple of leaves on them, so I decided to chop the leaves off because I felt like all the energy was going to the leaves uh, because not many side shoots were coming off. So I just stripped it back to it was a stick. And as you can see there, we're starting to get loads of uh, side shoots coming on. I'll try and zoom in a bit better, guys, just this camera's not the best of. But there we go. So these hopefully are going to be a later, uh, a later pepper for us. So we'll see. Uh, these are just a couple of leaks what I had spare what I just chucked in the out to see how they're getting on A couple of them look like they're stretching so possibly could be going to bolt uh, That one in the middle looks all right. It's just a little bit bent, but that's not a problem Just let it be This here is a Thai chili Got that given off in our plot holder and that there is my watermelon So I've been trying well, since I've been doing the garden and now this is my fourth year uh, to actually grow a watermelon and this one is the best one up there now so fingers crossed fingers crossed all we marigolds are coming through lovely uh, as you can see there if we look down there so I've been stripping the leaves away so we're letting all the airflow going through and we're starting to get some tomatoes on them as you can see there and also we've got some going on at the back but what I was saying about the leaves was so as you can see this leaves is a canny size so you've got like a little leaf big leaf little leaf big leaf so I'll just trim it right there so there we go that's all I do and it just controls it a little bit and it just helps that airflow to go through and like I say once the plant starts getting taller I'm always trimming off around the bottom plenty of air that's what they like uh, onions, mixed bag, really, really doing good. Uh, these are the calces. And as you can see there, nice big giant uh, onions. 
that's a kind of size I try and get in there and hold it so there we go it's a nice size guys nice and hard solid absolutely solid so we've got a few of them there ticking on ticking on happy days so they're the Kelsey's so yeah so like I say how you thinking has just had a good weeding and every other day try and keep on top of it right and guys so that's we do spot on like I say I needed to get it on because of the wind and I'm gonna do some sort of wind and that at the bottom but that's on that day right so we bought enough squash as you can see that one's getting battered all over now yeah, them two are holding in. So I've done like a little trench around it so when it rains it doesn't go around the roof ball or rot it. Uh, but unfortunately it's not the rain one I'm worried about or the water, it's the actual uh, wind. Look at that. It's a wind. Oh. Oh, that's starting to rot off. Yeah, like I say guys, I struggled with them. Uh, I did have a little cucumber near the diva, but again, there was the wind. Uh, just blown it all over and snapped it. That's why I had a little stick there, just to try and protect it, but I was too late. These uh, tomatoes seem to be doing all right. Obviously, the leaves are curling a little bit. Uh, so that's uh, an indication to me that it is a bit too hot for them. Because uh, they're getting plenty of water, because I water them every day. So, one thing about doing is, because the cucumber's gone, is getting some of that netting stuff and just maybe putting it on the top and then maybe it's just on the back just to try to blind that light a little bit so it's not too strong. Uh, I need to get behind there and give all that a trim as well. I think it's honeysuckle or something. Uh, but as you can see, it's come towards me so I need to clean all that. But AI, I want to do some sort of with the netting just to try and blind the light a little bit and hopefully that helps them. Uh, these are the leaks, what I've done. My own leaks, what I saved from my own leak head. And now they're starting to get a lot of rust on them. So there we go. You can get stuff for it to get it off, but just let it be, guys. Let it be. Yeah, they're looking green because they were quite pale, but they're starting to get colour on them, so we'll just let them be. Uh, these are my onions from seed. So these are the Elsa, the Elsa Craigs. And they're doing, some of them are doing all right, uh, but like I say, I'm quite worried about the that allium fly. So these haven't been hit, not what I can see of anyway. It's the onion set over there. Broad beans are looking good. Uh, starting to get plenty of broad beans on now. So like I say, guys, we're just going through weeding and all. But here uh, we're starting to get broad beans on. I'm just feeling them because I just want to make sure they're the right size before I start picking them. Uh, I did give these a good water yesterday. And we had a lot of black fly. Just at the tips. So... The plant's got the peas on, so I'll just nip that off. Also, you can just get straight in there with the hose, dead close, and it blows them off. Uh, but you tend to find that they hang around at the tips. So as soon as you see them at the tips, just take it off straight away. And hopefully that prevents it, prevents the fly from spreading. Right. Sweet corn. So this is a... Uh, incredible and uh, it's looking really really good the ones that are covered over there in the shade a little bit are a little bit slower at grown but they're all getting a nice size so if we look at this plant yeah this is a nice size plant it's looking really good it's starting to get a little side shoot on it's hard for you to see but there's one there yeah pull that away from your plant Pull that 
away from your plant because what happens is, is this plant's going to grow nice and tall and when it grows nice and tall at the top of the plant this this section here it shoot out a, a male part of the plant and then in between the leaves you start to see tassels that is your corn developing and the male because it's wind pollinated will blow it like that all the stuff of the male plant will come down and it will hit the tassels and it will pollinate the kernels so you get a sweet corn each tassel represents one kernel so all them tassels more or less need to be fully pollinated so that's why you grow them in box sections but what the thing is with these side shoots what you've got to watch out for is which i'm going to go and show you now is if you don't look at them or leave them because these side shoots will potentially it, it's another plant trying to grow so if we look at this here it's looking rather scraggy rather weak because all the energy is going to that what's looking really nice so we've got a couple of big ones there and see how the corn's a lot smaller compared to the other ones because all the energy is going into these suckers so there's one there you see 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 and like I say don't touch anything up these ones it just comes from the base of the plant it just slows the growth down in the plant because like I see all the energy is, is going into that side shoot and I learnt that I learnt that when I start growing sweet corn because I let them be. I recognised it and I saw it, but I let it be and I thought, I wonder what that is. And then I realised when it was when it grew, it was a deformed bit of sweet corn on it. No good whatsoever. So just pull them out. But like I say, in between these leaves, the tassels will come, but the male bit comes first. So the male will come up and then the tassels will come. So look all that there. All wasted energy. Nothing's happened over there just yet. So yeah, so I'll probably need to get back into there and just make sure everything's like pulled out. There we go. Uh, we peas are looking really good now, so I'm gonna get a load of peas on these all over. Absolutely riddled, brilliant. Uh, so these peas, if you remember, guys, if you follow us, were uh, multi sown in the greenhouse in a 40 multi cell tray, and I dropped about two to three seed in each one. And there we go. Didn't nip the tops off, didn't do anything like that. And uh, it's absolutely full on both sides. So really, really happy with them. Done really well this year in this garden. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, this is the kale. So as you can see, uh, some of the kale is not looking the best of. A lot smaller ones there. I guarantee I'll pull them out. They've probably got problems. So yeah, it's a shame, but at the end of the day, guys, we don't know. We'll, this is the first time I grow stuff in this garden, so I just don't know. And I just feel like these are looking a little bit yellow, not as green. It's probably hard to see by the, the picture, uh, but in the centre, they're all picking up a little bit. So hopefully, uh, I sprayed them and caught it in time. So we'll see. Broccoli, I've really, really struggled to grow some broccoli. Uh, I haven't had a decent broccoli head of the Calabrese uh, since I've been gardening, basically. So I've got recommended this uh, broccoli, which was the uh, Marathon F1. And uh, it's just a shame. It's probably a good broccoli, but it's just getting attacked by loads of different bugs. I am getting in there and trying to clean it all out for any slugs and snails, but 
we haven't had any issues like that it's just the, the little flies and stuff like that so so I put some sweet out and stuff in here so I've got some sweet some sprouts in here and as you can see there someone's been munching on them so these are we Brussels sprouts uh, we've got some cabbages in there and these are the Savoy cabbage I put covers over the top of them because they've been getting attacked uh, these are my cauliflowers in the exhibition ones really good a uh, variety supposed to be and they were just getting et so I put covers on just to protect them so once I got a certain size, I just take the covers straight off. But as you can see there, that's some more broccoli of the Calabrese Marathon. Just been getting that. So bit of a nightmare, bit of a nightmare. Uh, right. So we'll look here, as you can see, all the leaves are curled and grey. Uh, like I say, uh, they're picking up now. All the best stuff's coming through. This is the old growth, what was getting attacked. And uh, now we're just starting to see the, how much damage was actually done. Uh, but they're no longer there now. They're all nice and clean. Managed to get on top of it. Uh, just trying to give them plenty of feed just to boost them up a little bit because I know that the plant's been knocked. So, yeah, keep an eye on them. These are the cheesy F1s. Excellent cauliflower. Grew these for about two years now. Uh, it's going to be third year growing them. Never let us down loads more peas as you can see along there absolutely fantastic a load of more peas uh, along there as well uh, these are the either stir on or the turbo uh, as you can see some of them are looking okay some of them are not some are starting to split double head some of them just look a little bit deformed over there or over there so you know see that there white rod see them there see it there that's the issue that's the issue They're in it all. So I uh, saw so not look very promising any of these. Not at all. These ones seem to be doing a bit better. But also if we look at that there, it's double headed, so that could be an indication that someone's gone on. A bit gutter in. Uh, the carrots seem to be doing okay, hopefully. We're not known to pull them up. I'm keeping all these in my hands, guys, because I, I need to put these in the uh, in the bin. They like the bin while I burn. Uh, more broad beans, as you can see there. Got a load of broad beans down there. So looking good. Just keep nine them so I know when to pick them. These are starting to pick up now. Hopefully, these haven't got any cabbage root fly. Uh, but we've got some January King Freeze here, and these are the summer ones, Golden Acre, I think they're called. But if you look carefully, as you can see where it's grey, that's where they're being attacked by the grey aphid. And they're the older leaves now, so we're starting to see the actual damage of the plant. I've sown a load of carrot along this string line here. All the way along, all the way along. And also I put a load in there as well. I just want to just go over here and hide this in the bin. Absolute nightmare. This section needs to be sorted, but that's another day. French climbing green beans. Uh, hmm, seem to be struggling as well. Uh, they're all moving. 
uh, very slowly so hopefully they do I do get them up these canes uh, but I, I dropped a couple of seed in as well just for back up next to them and they're starting to come through and germinate nicely so they're all starting to pick up because we're quite yellow yeah, but there we go there's a seed there where I dropped in it's picking up so just a bit back up yeah an absolute load of beetroots along there so I'm just going to let them be and then what I'll do is get a clump like that and I'll pull a clump away and then we'll have a little clump just like that and this that little clump there can grow to whatever size beets I want and I take them when I want so I'll show you this whole nice little group there take that away 75 pence for a bag of seed fill the whole that whole section that whole run one bag so if you can afford to hide them away and now just let that be and see how they get on and now just slowly work away all the way along rainbow radishes so these are different kinds and as you can see there starting to get a show now so these are multi sown again just just hide in uh, spring onions white ones and red ones same again guys multi sown just put straight in like that just keep an eye on the water and not too much water draw french green beans these are picking up lovely now so i'm really really pleased with the way these are looking so happy days uh, starting to get the flowers on so these are the Ferrari F1 and then over there I have done some multi sown of snowball turnip and then we'll just see how they're going uh, but yeah I just start going for the beetroot like I've done there and slowly work way along so Mara's papers are looking canny just had one mound up that's all i've done to them uh the desrays are looking all right this one's a little bit weird this plant but starting to get the flowers on now and then we charlotte over there are looking really good as well so there we go guys right guys there uh, so there we have it a uh, bit of a mixed bag out there some stuff's doing okay some stuff's struggling a little bit uh, down to the pest and things like that expected that uh, expected that this year didn't get the garden until august uh, we managed to get the, the pony tunnel up we managed to sort out all the the, the land and getting all the plots where we're we're going to be putting more stuff and things like that uh, we managed to do all that uh, so i'm really really pleased with that and once we got the stuff in the ground i knew we we're going to get attacked by different stuff and this is why i needed to know what was attacking it where it was getting attacked and and, and learn from it you know uh, every garden's different every garden's different the bloke next door was telling us about that they get a, a a lot of club root never had club root on plot one never had club root club root i believe is a, a, a fungus which is a, attaches itself to the the roots and it swells the roots up and it causes a lot of problems and it just starves the plant with nutrients and stuff like that and it just kills over uh, never had that before so be interesting to say that uh, just to just to have that bit of experience if that makes sense uh, but aye everything's getting everything's getting hit uh, it's the weather and all this weather does not help whatsoever you know one minute's red hot next minute it's freezing cold it's raining it's windy it's a lot of wind we've got a lot of wind this year i tell you a lot of wind uh, but aye guys uh, so i expected that you know uh, we'll just keep on going like i say we came a long way We've got all our ground sorted out, you know, we've got the pony tunnel up. This garden was a right mess. Uh, go back on my previous videos to the sideshow and you will see uh, how this plot was when I first took it on. And I slowly started to do it up. Uh, I don't need updated though. But you know, you, you, you see how bad it was, you know. So we've done a lot of work to get it where it is. So I expected this, you know. But we've got some nice stuff out there, we've got some peas and that, you know, the cauliflower's going to recover, hopefully the the broccoli and all that, 
sort itself out and uh, recovers and things like that because I did spray them with the uh, nemesis uh, so I will top that up again in the next five weeks so hopefully I caught it just in time Plot one's getting attacked and all there's loads of stuff going on up there uh, we've got some big plans what we're going to be doing up that plot uh, me and my dad's going to have a big turnover we've been doing some drones and stuff like that and going through it and that so we've got some good ideas what we're going to be doing up there uh, so hopefully we're going to be doing that next day because uh, this garden is more or less up and running now uh, more or less there so I'm really pleased with just a couple of things where I need to tie up and then that's it it, it, it just runs itself uh, that's how I wanted it so like I say a lot of work what's going to be going on on the second plot because it's loads of stuff going on up there and all that we've been getting attacked by the roof flying stuff up there as well so and also the ground the ground needs to be broken up and also so it's easy at the mop and, and, and stuff like that so like i say guys i don't know a video on that uh, but yeah like i say not going to beat myself up things are looking good uh, got some nice peas out there some nice beans uh, the potatoes are looking good uh, spring onions are looking spot on uh, gonna have hopefully have some nice cauliflowers and broccoli in that can't wait i just want me a bottle of squash to start just taking off and i want my cucumbers to start taking off so i can start getting them tied up uh, but they just feel like they're just not moving uh, but hopefully fingers crossed in the next couple of weeks they'll be flying and they'll be taking over <laughs> hope so uh, but there we go guys uh, cheers for watching uh, cheers for your likes and your comments and that i really, really appreciate it uh, hope he's all well uh, <clears throat> if he's considering subscribing and stuff like that guys come along just hit that subscribe button and hit that bell and you'll be notified every time i upload a video uh, like i say we've got uh, a couple of plots what we're working on at the moment uh, so come along follow our journey and see what we'll get up to and uh hi so have a good one guys and hopefully i'll catch you in the next couple of days we'll see till i know